Good evening, members of council, ladies and gentlemen, staff. I see that we have quorum, and I call this regular meeting for the Town of Pelham Council for Monday, March 21st, 2016, to order. We will begin by the, with the singing of the national anthem, and I would ask all who are able to rise. And I would ask Councillor Papp to lead us. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patron of, in all thy sons command, with glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Thank you, Councillor Papp. Thank you all. The first order of business is the adoption of the agenda. It has been moved by Councillor Ribiak, seconded by Councillor Durley. Be it resolved that the agenda for the March 21st, 2016 regular meeting of Council be adopted as circulated. Are there any changes to the agenda? There being none, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next item is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. That is, any conflicts of interest that any members of Council may have. Do any members have any conflicts? None, Mr. Mayor. Can that be noted that there are no conflicts? Thank you. Now we have a presentation, and I see that, um, and this is for former Mayor Marty Collins. I'm going to come down to the uh, to the podium, and I see some members of uh, Mayor Collins's family here. Marty Collins is remembered as a strong voice for Pelham when she served for two terms as mayor from 1988 to 1994. I have some quotes from people that served with her. Certainly, in my view, Niagara has lost a real leader, said Rob Welsh, upon learning that Collins had died in the Welland Hospital in November. She was smart, pulled no punches, and was very articulate. Born, um, sorry, entering politics in 1972 as Pelham's trustee on what was then the Niagara South Board of Education, she served on the school board for 16 years, including two terms at, as chair, as two years as chair, and two years as vice chair. She was elected mayor of Pelham, and also re-elected three years later. All six years acting double duty as the town's representative on regional council. We didn't have a second councillor as we do now. Bruce Tim said she, uh, she had a lot of energy and spoke up quite vigorously for Pelham. Former Mayor Ralph Beamer said she was a great leader for me. She was a great mayor for Pelham and a mentor. Debbie Zimmerman, former regional chair, remembered Collins as a Sharp woman with a wonderful sense of humor. She was smart, said Ms. Zimmerman, and despite her being a flaming conservative and I a flaming liberal, none of that ever came between us. I had the honor of meeting the former mayor on a couple of occasions, and she was always very encouraging and very supportive. Before entering politics, Collins worked for eight years at the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce in St. Catharines, and she was very active volunteering in our community. She was a teacher at Holy Trinity Church in Font Hill, and as a Pelham Home and School Association executive member, and also for the Pelham Minor Hockey and Minor Lacrosse Associations. To honor her service and her leadership, town flags flew at half-mast at Marty's honor on Friday, 
the 6th of November, 2015 in Pelham, and on Thursday, the 12th of November, at the Niagara Regional Headquarters. Very pleased that a bronze plaque has been posted here in the council chamber. And many are looking, they're turning their heads, so I'll tell you what it says. It says, in memory of Margaret Marty Collins, 1934 to 2015, Mayor, Town of Pelham, 1988 to 1994, her devoted community service will always be remembered. I'm very pleased that members of Marty's family are here this evening, and I'd invite Everett and your son to come forward. I just said we, we have the wording of the plaque here and know that it's always here in our council chamber and we always think of our members that served here on council. Would you like to say Yeah, anything? I would just like to say a little bit. On behalf of the family, I want to thank council for honoring her memory this way. And she felt very strongly her whole life on giving back to the community she loved. Mm -hmm. And she did that from day one. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Take a round of applause. Just you don't have to stay. You don't have to stay. <laughs> Just very quickly, thank you for remembering my mother's life of uh, service to the town. It really uh, means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate her service. Thank you. Have a great thank evening. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> thank you very much. Now we move to other presentations. We have a presentation by Lisa Gallant and David Swan regarding the <coughs> Golden Shoe Award. So thank you very much, Mayor Dave, members of council, and Palum staff. Um, I'm here today with uh, Margaret Lasaro from Pelham, uh, Glenny Green School, Public School in Pelham, and David Swan from uh, the Pelham Active Transportation Committee. And we are pleased to be presenting to you uh, today the Golden Shoe Award. And this is in recognition of the leadership that the town has provided in active and safe school travel. So school travel planning is a national program and we're running that throughout uh, the Niagara region. The intent behind the program is to decrease traffic congestion near schools, particularly at the start and the end of the school day, in order to increase the number of students who can walk and bike to school. Now, since 2011, the town of Pelham has made significant infrastructure changes um, that have addressed the safety of walking routes for children who wish to walk or bike to school. This includes the addition of traffic lights, new sidewalks, traffic calming, bike lanes, and crossing guards. Town staff attend meetings with Glen A. Green's School Travel Planning Committee as needed to further discuss ways to address active and safe school travel. The school is further supported by the Pelham Active Transportation Committee, particularly David Swan, um, during their monthly walk to school events and other activities to encourage students to walk or bike safely to school. So Pelham is one of five area municipalities and Glenny Green is one of six schools in Niagara to receive the Golden Shoe Award, which was announced recently at an active and safe uh, school summit here in Niagara in February. So we know that national programs such as school travel planning are effective in getting more children to walk and bike to school. This <laughs> reduces traffic congestion at schools, improves air quality, and improves student health through physical activity. These benefits extend to all of Pelham residents as the investments made in infrastructure contribute to more walkable, bikeable, and safer communities. Encouraging residents to use active modes of travel more often, especially for those short trips that they may take um, that take less than 15 minutes mm -hmm. on foot or by bike. So thank you to the town of Pelham for supporting active and school travel and congratulations on receiving the Golden Shoe Award. 
Thank you very much. For you as well. It's a great honor. <laughs> and I would, we'll, we'll come down. I would ask Councillor King, who serves on the Active Transportation Committee, to come down and receive the award. She said it was her size, so. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. It's gratifying to see that the great work of the volunteers, the Active Transportation Committee, the work of the school and the, and the, the students and the parents all coming together to uh, realize this award. So thank you very much on behalf of Councillor King and all of Council. Thank you. Thanks again for your presentation, and as I mentioned, uh, it is gratifying to see, yeah. um, to receive this, and we've made a number of changes, and you acknowledge them in the uh, information in your presentation, the information you provided <coughs> uh, to the communities, and it uh, encourages us to continue on, so thank you very much. I do have a motion. It's been moved by Councillor King, seconded by Councillor Durley, be it resolved that Council receives the presentation from Lisa Gallant, David Swan, and Margo Missouri regarding the Golden Shoe Award for information. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thanks again. We appreciate it. And we have one more presentation this evening, and it is by Gail Hillier, who is the chair of the Pelham Seniors Advisory Committee. Thank you very much for joining us, and I see that you have other members of the committee here. Including, <laughs> perhaps somebody, um, Anna, would you get him a, yeah, okay. Mr. Gibson, a chair? Yeah. A chair, actually? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Okay. Chair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think we've got it together now. Um, I want to thank uh, the mayor and council for the support that the seniors uh, advisory committee has had uh, throughout its lifetime of about four years now. Um, and I'd like to recognize the members of the committee who are here tonight and explain what a couple others are doing. Uh, Bill is uh, here to work the PowerPoint. <laughs> thank you. Bob Hildebrand is behind me. Can you stand up? <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Uh, Sharon Cook, who's the vice chair of the committee, is also in the corner. And I'd like to recognize Judy Reed, who provided leadership to this committee from the first time we met with Mayor Dave and is still here supporting us, for which I'm always grateful. Um, I want to take you on a short journey of. Um, from where we've been, where we are, and where we hope to be going. Um, Mayor Dave called a group of uh, three together some years ago and asked us to develop some terms of reference for a Seniors Advisory Committee. We did that, and you as the Council approved those terms of reference, and through due process guided uh, very skillfully by Nancy Bizzato, we were uh, appointed as a committee and with Nancy, uh, with uh, Judy as the first chair. Um, we continue to uh, work very hard to keep the language of inclusiveness and friendliness uh, related to seniors in our focus. Uh, we also try to keep our ear to the community and 
to see what is important to the seniors at the moment. For example, you see the word housing there, and that has popped out very recently as uh, an urgent concern of many seniors who want affordable and accessible housing, and our committee is in process of being responsible to that for that. But that's how we pick uh, our focus as we move through. Um, next. We also uh, have kept in mind the uh, <coughs> imperatives of the World Health Organization. Um, and just going to the last bullet, uh, all of which is uh, mandated to provide a quality of life for seniors and community at large. Um, we keep revisiting these, not because we haven't got anything else to do, but we don't want to lose the focus uh, in which we are working, Bill. Um, there's a team. There's always a team. And in Pelham, uh, we have a mayor and council. Uh, we have some wonderful staff, and I won't take my, the rest of my 10 minutes to say all the things that they've done, but they're very helpful. We see ourselves as one of part of all the advisory committees, and if you look at our membership, you'll see that we have people from Active Transportation, Youth Advisory Committee, the library, etc., <coughs> and of course the community. And those things around the edge are, which I refer to as floaters, but they wouldn't let me do that. <laughs> it's just to remind us that there are a whole group of people who are out there who are either primary members or seniors or they serve seniors or they're concerned about seniors and they're all part of the group with whom we communicate regularly. Now we're going to uh, introduce you to uh, a few seniors who are going to tell you, whoops. <laughs> Sorry, just hang on. We'll be, okay, thank you, Jack. Uh, these, these are people from Chatham, Kent, and uh, Judy Shepard and I participated in a webinar. Uh, the information is available here. But in this uh, webinar, there were some seniors who were telling us what their concerns were, and we want to share a few minutes of that with you. It's that one right there. So okay. No, I think it's down. It's it down it scrolls. You scroll down. Why don't you take it? Uh, Bill, I think you scroll down. Okay. Is Nancy can you yeah, keep going? There we are. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we just do that. Thank you. Okay. Just to hear the voices of some people who are there. Can you turn the volume up a bit? I don't know. It's how. controlled up there. Okay. Our friends are all retiring, but I, I had no company retirement plan and too many bills to ever say enough. I will have to work past 65, but my employer is looking to cut staff, and I don't think anyone will hire someone my age. I'm 67 and finally downsizing, but my family home didn't sell for as much money as those new, smaller houses sell. I can't take on a mortgage at this stage. Plus, these homes are not close to shopping and other amenities I'll need. I'm 73. I used to be quite athletic. died suddenly and our children and their families moved away for work. I spent a lot of time just watching TV these days. I'm 78. I find it difficult to shop on my own. 
The doors on too many stores are heavy to open, while items I need are either placed high on the shelf where I can't reach, or are packaged in large portions that go to waste. I may be one. I've lived on this farm most of my life, raised my family here, but I no longer have a driver's license. I don't want to keep asking my kids for help, so I might have to move into town just so I can get groceries or go anywhere. I'm 85. I just had surgery. The hospital discharged me with some information, but I was in such discomfort I couldn't focus. There's all kinds of places that can help me, and I don't know the system. I've got all these forms I'm told I can do online. It's so confusing, absolutely so confusing. I'm 61. Two more people each year will be old enough to retire than will be old enough to run the workforce, so my employer tries to retain older employees. With more flexible hours and job sharing so I can gradually phase in my retirement when I'm ready. I'm 67. I sold my family home and I'm able to find a reasonably priced one in a good neighborhood. There's a park, bike path, shops, and professional offices all nearby. This new place will meet my needs for the next 20 years. I'm 73. People tell me about the local senior center. I never thought about joining something like that before, but it has been great. There's people, talk to, and activities. I'm not working to Zumba. It's cheap and has been a great way to keep active. Now when my kids call, I'm not at home. I'm 78. Older shoppers are 20% of the population, but have half of the disposable income in society. We're the only demographic that's growing so more stores compete for our business. Since the age-friendly business program started, I just look for the sign. It tells me who's accessible, who has places to rest, signage that's easier to read, wider aisles, and has options for dealing with live people rather than machines. I'm 81. I don't want to become a burden on my family. And thanks to a variety of transportation services from buses to taxis, volunteer networks like at my church, or not for profits like TAP, I have options. I can book and pay for them on my own and don't have to wait for other people to take me. I'm 85. A full range of community support services and programs are available at a cost I can afford. There is more cooperation between agencies, so my care is more easily managed. Information is explained to me, and there is less for me and my family to do on our own. It has reduced wait times and the need to travel frequently, so that I can focus more on staying healthy and getting better. <laughs> Um, if anybody wants the clip about the community center for tomorrow night, we'd be glad to make it available to you. <laughs> um, with, uh, again, the assistance of the community and the leaders, uh, we put together um, some goals uh, and some anticipated outcomes. and. I'm not going to go through these, but there are five of them, and they are sim the bullets are simply samples of things that we have done uh, in 2015 and continue to uh, work on. Uh, first one is advocacy, and um, any of you who have worked with us know that we do that <coughs> frequently, uh, taking things to town managers whenever we need to. <laughs> um, the second um, goal uh, is uh, public transportation, which is a very important one to us. And uh, we, um, I have to say, I, I, I've been taking the bulletin, the brochure out that has been published, 
and it's been very well received. People now understand that they can call, and it's, it's excellent, so my compliments for the design. The third goal is senior programming. Uh, we support town activities and we initiate them. Uh, we're in the process of planning the fourth uh, forum, uh, which will uh, deal with the issue of housing. And if you cast your mind back for a minute, we said housing was on the, an important thing on the circle. So that's where we've gone for this spring. And again, we, we try in any way we can to support any seniors activities that are going on. The fourth one is um, research and information sharing and attending uh, conferences. Uh, Bob, for example, attended the uh, AMC conference, brings back information to us. And, excuse me, one of my personal goals is to try to figure out what to do with all this information so it is available, readily available. Uh, the uh, fifth goal emphasizes our outreach. Um, and just related to two things, uh, one of our members tonight is attending the age-friendly uh, workshop on behalf of our committee. We'll bring the information back. And our youth advisory person is currently in Ottawa at the Youth <coughs> Political Forum. And she will come back even more energized. She's really good balance <coughs> for those of us who are a bit older. Um, there's much more that's happened, of course, and much more planned, including the forum that I mentioned. I would be very remiss if I didn't publicly thank our Councillor Peter Papp. As I go through all of this, Peter, he attends meetings. <laughs> uh, he <laughs> provides a really excellent critique of whatever, knowledgeable critique of whatever plans we have. And he is at the other end of the email or the phone for us. So uh, we are really grateful to Peter. And at this point in time, to Judy Shepard, who's also always at the end of the email saying, oops, or what now, don't worry, any other nice pats on the back, she's very good at it. So I thank you for this opportunity to share as much information as we can from what I see as a very active, enthusiastic <laughs> group. If you have questions, I'll be glad to answer them. And if not, I'll just say thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Hillier, uh, representing the uh, Seniors Advisory Committee. I wonder if members of council have any questions for Ms. Hillier. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, and through you, you had mentioned uh, uh, that you were having trouble distributing information. Have you talked to uh, the town around space on, on the, the website? Um, it, that's really a good question. Uh, uh, there are a couple of things, and we do have a library board member on our committee as well. We have two generations here. We have old seniors uh, who are not very functional. I mean, to see an example tonight, I, I wouldn't go near that or you might not have seen anything. And then there's the, the younger uh, group. So the town has been very cooperative, and our minutes are all on the website, dates for um, activities and so on. But there is this other group that still want hard copy, and we haven't, in my opinion, yet got a, a good, it's the committee's responsibility, I'm not saying it's council's, I'm just saying we haven't quite come up with a plan that <coughs> It does indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. much. Others? Yes. Questions? Councilor Papp, would you like to say I, something? I just wanted to call Council Representative. Go ahead. <clears throat> yes, I do attend the meetings, even though I'm late sometimes, <laughs> as I'm lassoed going down the hallway. I had to say, Mr. Mayor, that this I thoroughly enjoy working with this group. I think we're always open and trying to deal with the issues of the. Uh, 
seniors in our community plus the fact it's it's a uh, <coughs> there's multi ages the different people are there expressing different views and I think we've done extensive work making sure that we get to age friendly I just want to add that we're about to embark and I'm working with the, the group also the town that one of the issues that you saw there is about affordable housing mm -hmm. and we are targeting May 18th that uh, and I'll let Gail as a form that's going to be open not just to seniors to others that we will have the major developers come in and we'll talk about mm -hmm. how we go about planning for the currently and in the future for housing that would have, more importantly at this point affect those of, uh, of us who are in that category because I'm, I'm looking to downsize too at some point so this is a critical issue and I look forward to working with them over the next uh, few months and I think you'll find this very fascinating because we've got a quite a quite an agenda set out so on that note I'll leave it and by the way uh, before I forget Sh Sharon I did find my notes <laughs> so these are the notes that we'll put together we'll we'll apprise you all of how we're going to be do conducting this mm -hmm. and I imagine we'll get and thanks mr. mayor for your support on this because I know we're looking also getting Niagara regional housing involved mm -hmm. but I can't tell you enough I really I just I really really enjoy working with the, that whole committee well. It's um, thank you, Councilor. The, the town will be familiar with this. You uh, approved us uh, putting forth a proposal for yes. uh, eight thousand uh, dollars <coughs> for a project in the fall, and uh, I haven't officially done this yet. But uh, the first time in my career, and Peter's <laughs> known me for many years, I couldn't spend the money. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just a resident, uh, you know, a community thing. Uh, we had thought of using um, the coffee corner in Sobeys uh, near the exit, accessible and all of that. And one on one conversation, maybe to deal with community center one week and with transit another week, and just uh, for about eight weeks, put this proposal together. Is all ready to send it to the Secretariat. Spoke to um, Ron, who essentially, uh, probably not for public consumption, but essentially gave us a store. And so I came back and said, I can't spend the money. We can do the project. <laughs> but I, I, I cannot, uh, in all good faith, put forward the money for the. Uh, for the grant, so I will officially have to do something. But that's exactly what happens mm -hmm. in this community. There's always so much to support, and I occasionally hear that you know we support our young people a lot, and we do. But this uh, constituent of seniors is equally well supported, and I thank you all. Thank, thank you very much, Ms. Hillier. I do want to say just a, f a few things. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for putting together uh, the presentation that you've given us this evening. I think it's a, it's a real model for other committees um, to follow, and some have come and reported to us, but you're very, very specific and, and very diligent in, in what you're reporting to us. I was moved uh, when I watched that video over the weekend as well, and they say a picture is worth a thousand words, but I think that video is shows in a million words um, what what the the goals might be for the um, seniors uh, advisory committee, and I think it 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 helps more than you know really to put it in a in a in a common way, a common language that people can understand and saying that's where we want to get to and it's, it's so well done so thank you for finding that and sharing that with us um, and and I and I want to say thank you for your leadership and and on behalf of council to all of the members of the committee those that are here this evening uh, mr. Gibson mr. Hildebrand mrs. cook and uh, Ms. Reed um, just tremendous work on the committee and and uh, again planning the next event taking the issues that are important to the segment that you're representing, having that vision uh, of what you want to achieve for our community and, and working at it very, very diligently. So thank you very much on behalf of council. Thank you. I had a call from a person who wanted to know if we could provide transportation for them uh, into the community. And I said, where are you calling from? And they said, botany. Now, if any of you know, Botany is a community of uh, about 50 people 
outside Chatham somehow, and it happened to be a, a relative of a friend that is sort of pulling my leg. But if you <laughs> if you can do it in Pelham, maybe I should move to Pelham. <laughs> Anyhow, thank That's you great. very thank much. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I do have a motion to receive, and it has been moved by Councilor Durley, seconded by Councilor King. Be it that be it resolved that Council receives the presentation from Gail Hillier, Chairperson, Pelham Seniors Advisory Committee, regarding their 2015 annual committee report for information. Thank you again for all of your hard work, and we look forward to that uh, event coming up on May 18th. Thank you. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you again. Councillor Papp, I'm sure you'll you'll keep us up to, up to yes, speed on that. In fact, there will be a public uh, announcement going on, general announcement, and then we'll give you more details for the 18th itself. Good. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, thank you. Now, normally this would be the time for our regional councillor, our other regional councillor, Councillor Beatty, to present. Uh, he's, uh, I think he already gave us that presentation last time, so we look forward to his presentation next time. So now we move to adoption of minutes. It has been moved by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor King. Be it resolved that the following minutes be adopted as printed, circulated, and read. And those are of the meeting, the regular meeting of Council of March 7th, 2016. Are there any errors or omissions in those minutes? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. That motion is carried. Now we move to consent agenda items to be considered in block. There's quite a substantial number. Are there any items that members would like to lift for separate consideration? I see Councillor Durley. Councillor? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to lift item 10.5.2, the uh, City of Markham motion to request government uh, of Ontario to limit the jurisdiction of the OMB. Thank you very much. We'll lift that and deal with it separately. Councillor Junkin? Uh, yes. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to lift item number 10.3.1. 10.3.1. Regarding the criminal code, is that the one? No. <laughs> no. Uh, the oh, I'm sorry. The communications timeline? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I was reading the wrong number. There's a five in there. Mm -hmm. Apologies for that. Thank you. Any other items? So it, is, it has been moved by Councillor Durley, second by Councillor King. Be it resolved that the following consent agenda items be received and the recommendations contained therein be approved as applicable. One, the recommendations arising from the Committee of the Whole meeting of March 7th. And the motion is, be it resolved that the recommendations arising from the Committee of the Whole meeting of March 7th be received and approved. We also have the minutes for approval of that committee meeting of March 7th. That staff report has been lifted. And we have one item of correspondence, and that's from the Niagara Parks Commission regarding their marina. We have two items from the Regional Municipality of Niagara, action items. The first, uh, Regional Council resolution regarding the amendments to the criminal code. Be it resolved that Council receives the issue sheet Regional resolution regarding amendments to the criminal code and the Council of the Town of Pelham do hereby endorse and support the Niagara Regional Council's resolution. The next, Regional Council resolution regarding the vehicle registration tax. Be it resolved that the Council receives the correspondence from the Regional Municipality of Niagara regarding vehicle registration tax in Niagara, and that Pelham, the, t the Town of Pelham do hereby endorse and support Niagara Council's resolution to not support the implementation of vehicle registration tax in Niagara. And then we have some committee minutes for information. We have three of them. The first is from the Library Board and their meeting of January 27th. The second from the Pelham Seniors Advisory Committee and their meeting of February 3rd. And the final, the Pelham Active Transportation Committee minutes of January 19th. Are there any uh, issues, there are questions that members would like to ask on any of those items? Councilor Ribiak. Thank you. Just. Uh for clarification with regard to the terms of reference around the Pelham Cultural Advisory Committee that uh, come out of um, uh, our, our Committee of the Whole uh, recommendations. Thank you. Um, yes, they are, they are appended there. There was some change. Yes. So thank you for that. Go ahead, sir. Yes. Um, it, it occurs to me that there are, there are, there's the potential, I guess, of some, some crossover between this committee and, and the beautification committee, for example, public art. I'm just wondering whether um, whether some clarification might be provided as to, to how how staff, when 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 contemplating the terms of reference, felt 
that items like that might be um, might might be handled. Who who might handle them if if anyone? Thank you. I think Ms. Van Ravensway might be able to answer that. that Ms. Van Ravensway. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. When it comes to um, this advisory co um, committee, will. Um, put forth recommendations from our cultural master plan. When it comes to public art, we will be involving, um, we could be um, uh, corresponding with the uh, beautification committee. If need be, so they are in the loop as well. Good, Good excellent. Uh, and, and just one other, one other point. Ahead, uh, when, when we had our discussion in uh, Committee of the Whole, I know that I uh, made reference to um, perhaps one of the one of the objectives of the committee to to foster or to champion facilitation uh, of people to be involved in the arts and culture uh, by anyone who is interested, as opposed to, to culture simply being being uh, treated as um, as something to be consumed. Um, I'm not sure that I see in this that that is meant to be one of the objectives. Um, I can see how it might fit if one interpreted it that way. Um, is it the intention, I guess, of, of, of these terms of reference to that, that, that groups that are interested in pursuing cultural or artistic uh, activities will have the opportunity to, uh, to be facilitated to some degree through this? Yes. Through you, Mr. Mayor. The, this advisory committee, that would be an outcome of the advisory committee. The advisory committee would advise mm -hmm. council on, um, on recommendations and from there, the outcome would be a um, the arts would be involved. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Van Rieswey. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I Thank appreciate you. the clarification. Thank you. Any others to those uh, changes that we dealt with in, in the committee? Thank you. Any any others to any of the other items under consent agenda? Thank you. There being none, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. We had two items lifted. The first was lifted by Councillor Durley, and I believe I have your resolution here. Councillor, would you like me to uh, read it out for you? Sure, and then I'll give some rationale. Sir. Okay, thank you very much. So it's been moved by Councillor Durley, second by Councillor King, that communication item 1052 be received and that the resolution contained therein passed by the Council of the City of Markham regarding the jurisdiction of the Ontario Municipal Board be endorsed and supported, and that this resolution be forwarded to Premier Wynne Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing and local MPPs and the leaders of the Progressive Conservative Party and the New Democratic Party and the Aurora Councillor Tom McCrass? Maracas. Maracas, thank you very much. So that's the resolution, Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We did support a motion a few months ago that's very similar to this because there are uh, some municipalities that feel the power of the OMB is usurping power that municipalities have and, and actually making decisions that are not good for municipalities. So it uh, definitely, these people feel that there uh, should be some reform to that, and, and I personally agree. That's why I'm bringing this forward. Uh, as I mentioned in the in the motion, Tom Maracas is leading a group of uh, there's 12 or 14 uh, municipal leaders that are forming an initiative to put this forward, and they're got oh, probably 25 or 30 municipalities and counting. Uh, so I think to to where if we can endorse and support this, I would like to also make a notice of motion that I will be bringing forth a motion from the Town of Pelham at our next meeting in this same regard because it's uh, it's something I feel that really needs some attention and uh, the more we tell the province about it, the more probably it'll be heard. So uh, I ask my council members to support and endorse the, uh, the motion and we'll hope it gains more momentum. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Durley. And I believe... Um, this council has endorsed a, a resolution, but I think it was the same sort of situation, supporting and endorsing someone else. So that one seemed to, to seemed to lose traction maybe in yes. the, the winter time because of the, the snow and the, on the roads that the tires didn't hit the <laughs> pavement. But this this uh, uh, this particular initiative is is gathering a lot of momentum, and I think uh, uh, because the other one sort of fell short, it's good to jump on this bandwagon because in fact it looks like it's going to carry some weight. Thank you very much, Councillor. Are there any others that would like to comment on the motion? Thank you, Councillor Dur Durley, for raising it. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? And that motion carries unanimously. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor. The next item that was lifted um, is regarding the Pelham Community Centre communication timeline and the motion was to receive it for information. Councillor Junkin. Yes. Um, I wasn't here when Council had the meeting with the ADC uh, committee, uh, but in that meeting we had uh, originally had the communications deadline stretching well into the, into the summer. Uh, we had uh, polls being taken and booths putting, being put up in the uh, Canada Day celebrations, I believe. Uh, I see the renewed one, uh, the renewed uh, timeline uh, ends at the open house and the home show, and I take it that's because uh, the matter will be coming uh, to, uh, to council, uh, presumably in May. Is that why that timeline has been shortened? Mr. CAO, who can, can you answer that, or Mr. CAO? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The the plan that uh, the timelines that we put forward for council's uh, information are uh, something that we figured had a sort of beginning and an end, depending uh, uh, relative to the project. As far as informing the public, uh, tomorrow night council will receive a uh, detailed report from the architect and from the construction manager, along with staff, regarding the finances. Uh, and that will form the basis of the uh, the information that uh, we wanted to disseminate to the public. Um, that was uh, that was the logic behind the uh, the timeline that we put forward. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Yes, uh, thank you very much for answering that. Uh, one other thing that uh, that I'd like to uh, bring forward, as I see uh, in connections with the uh, dissemination of information, we have uh, direct mailer newspaper ads display boards and, uh, and, and, and the like. Uh, what I see missing, and along with many other residents that have telephoned me and emailed me, is I think that we should have a, uh, a meeting, a special meeting of council, uh, either held in uh, the four, either in uh, the station number one or, or, or at the uh, Legion, where residents can ask council as a whole questions from the floor or express their opinions on the project. By doing this, uh, we would therefore have a meeting on record and, uh, and I think the uh, citizens would love to have a chance to, uh, to talk to council as they're sitting. sitting. Okay, thank you. Uh, you do note from the um, communication plan that there is an open house planned. Um, it's tentatively marked, I think, here for Saturday, April 16th, so many people can yeah, attend. I see that, but I, I still would like to, uh, I, I think many people would like to have this other venue available to them. Okay. Thank you. Um, Should I put forth a motion? Well, I, I you, you can certainly do that. I would, um, I would suggest that maybe we want to um, think about that following the open house or following the presentation tomorrow. Um, it, that would be my recommendation, but uh, I think it would be in order. You can add that to the, to the schedule if you want. Um, well, I guess, okay, uh, I can always bring it up again then. Mm -hmm. I, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let, let's see how things unfold, yeah. and then we will go from that. Okay. So, so tomorrow's, what I would suggest to you is that uh, tomorrow's meeting is a um, committee meeting. Yes. So then, and the intention, as the CAO indicated, uh, is to receive all of the information. Yes. Then that meeting, which um, receive all the information from the from the architect, from the construction manager, and from town staff regarding the financing from town staff, then all of that will come to council on April fourth. Yes. Um, to receive. Yeah. So I would suggest, depending on how that meeting goes, then that, that would be an appropriate time, or another time would be following the open house and seeing how that, how that functions. I think the intention that we talked about um, in your absence uh, regarding the open house was it was, a, it was a time where people from the community can speak specifically with the architect, with the construction manager, with members of the Architectural Design Advisory Committee, with town staff, and with council. So it'll be a very, you know, uh, dynamic time when people can do that. So. Yes. 
I just I'm not belaboring the point. I just uh, got the feeling from a lot of people that they wanted it under a more structured uh, meeting. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So look forward to, to that perhaps coming up in the future. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anything further to the communication plan? I appreciate uh, Councillor Junkin raising it. And so it has been moved by Councillor Durley, second by Councillor King, that um, the Pelham Community Center communications timeline uh, be received uh, for information. We're going to call the question on that. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. Now we move to my report, which I cannot find at the moment. Forgive me. There it is. A short report. Uh, thank you. So, so two items. Uh, one of them being the business after five at uh, Bogio's Pharmacy Log Cabin on the 9th of March, 2016. <coughs> it, was, it was a great event. Um, very nice to have a chamber event there. Um, just a wonderful family business, and you could see that the the entire family was there, welcoming the community, welcoming chamber members, and and talking about their business and their pride that they have, not only in their business. Um, elsewhere in Niagara but also in uh, in our community so it was a wonderful event and I certainly on behalf of uh, council appreciate uh, Larry Boggio and his family for hosting that event the next report is on the OMHA Bantam BB finals which uh, this report was written about the puck drop which occurred on uh, the 11th of March very pleased to be part of that puck drop along with uh, Victoria Morrissey the Pella Minor Hockey Association president, and that was for the first game of the Bantam Double B final series at the Pelham Arena against uh, Strathroy. Um, very, very pleased that uh, they, the Bantams, Pelham Bantams, swept the series. Congratulations to them. And I understand that it's the first ever win for Pella Minor Hockey Association at the Double B level, which is very, very uh, considerable in the 49-year 49, 49 history. Um, of Pella Minor Hockey. So lots of hard work and dedication. As I mentioned, they swept that series. The first game, that one with the puck drop was 4-2, to 4-2 to at the next game in Strathroy, and 5-2 to two in front of an ecstatic um, audience here at the Pella Marina. Some members of council were there and some staff. It was great to see so many uh, members of the community that were there. Big crowd for the home game and a great show of support. Um, on behalf of council, I have invited them to our April 4th council meeting uh, to present them with certificates and tokens of uh, congratulations. <coughs> so we look forward to that uh, to that event. So congratulations to the uh, Bantam B Double B final finalists. Um, they certainly do us proud in our community. That is my report. And it has been moved by Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Ribiak, that council receive it for information. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you, Councillor. The next item is staff reports requiring action. And it has been moved by Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Ribiak. Be it resolved, the Council received the issue summary report, Old Pelham Town Hall Cenotaph Restoration Phase 2 Veterans Affairs for information. And that Council consider the bylaw to authorize the Mayor and Clerk to enter into an agreement with Veterans Affairs Canada for funding. It's a very uh, good news uh, report. Any question, or questions or comments from members of Council? Councillor Papp. Just a quick thing through you, Mr. Mayor. I don't know if the CAO or the Treasurer. The budget is 40000 so what I'm presuming is that the seventeen eight would be offset some of the costs, or the, is, that, is that the idea? Ms. Van Ravensway, would you that be able to that? answer that, please? To you, Mr. Mayor, that's that's correct. Okay. So our portion would be... Roughly would whatever. Yeah. Yep. Okay, that's, okay, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. We certainly appreciate that support from the federal government. Other questions, comments? I see a couple of members uh, from the community that have been active in that. Uh, thank you very much for your ongoing activity and involvement in that. We look forward to, I think Ms. Van Ravensway and I had a spoke uh, last week and uh, you're gonna be getting that uh, group back together to uh, assist with that. So thank you very much. And it looks like there's a, the goal is to complete the project. It says by uh, Friday, June 24th. 
Ms. Van Ravensway, can you give us some insight into the date? I understand it's a bit of an historic date. Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor, that is our goal. It's a hefty goal, but um, I believe that we can accomplish it. Uh, June the 24th was would be uh, 28 years, uh, the day of, or 28, I'm sorry, 98 years um, that the mortar was captured. So we would like to um, dedicate the site on June the 24th if we could. Okay, look forward to that, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and then it arrived in, in town, I believe it was in June in 1921 as well, so there's uh, an anniversary in there as well. Yes. So we look forward to more information coming forward about that event and uh, certainly on behalf of council I appreciate the involvement of members of the committee and uh, that will now become reactivated as a result of this great news from the federal government and again thank you to uh, Mr. Allison and other members of the federal government for assisting with this grant. I'm going to call the question unless there's any other councillors or questions or comments. I'm going to call the question. All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you again. Now we move to bylaws. It has been moved by Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Kersey. Be it resolved that Council of the Town of Pelham, having given due consideration to the following bylaws, do now read a first, second, and third time and do pass the same, and that the Mayor and Clerk be and are hereby authorized to sign and seal the bylaws. One, bylaw 3722 being a bylaw to exempt part of Block 26 in Registered Plan 59M399 from part lot. Uh, and to repeal from part law control is that what that should be and to repeal and replace bylaw number three five four five 2004 this is wheel and heights schultz communities font hill inc file number plc 0114 the second bylaw 3723 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of a site plan agreement for the lands located at 130 highway 20 east font hill gardens inc file number sp 0815 and the final one, bylaw 3724, being a bylaw authorizing the mayor and clerk to enter into an agreement with Her Majesty the Queen in right of Canada as represented by the Minister of Veterans Affairs under the Cenotaph Monument Restoration Program, restoration of the First World War Trench Mortar. Questions or comments regarding any of those bylaws? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Uh, before we move to the next resolution, which is a resolution to recess the, pardon me, to recess the in-camera portion, Councillor Durley, um, I'll just note that you did provide notice of motion that you will be bringing a motion forward at our next meeting regarding the Ontario Municipal Board. So I wanted the wanted the clerk to just note that at this point. Yeah, thank you. Is there anything further to say? No, nope, it'll be okay. coming forward on the 4th. Okay, thank you very much. Now, are we ready for a motion moved by Councillor Junk and seconded by Councillor Durley? Be it resolved that Council recess the in-camera portion of the meeting and reconvene immediately following the Policy and Priority Committee meeting scheduled for this evening. Call the question. All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion is carried. We'll take a brief recess. Thank you.